So I had the opportunity to drive an F83 M4 at New York Safety Track during the Slow Guys track day last week, so I figured I'd give my first impressions of the car. With this stuff, context is important to understand it, so let's start with that. I ran a best lap in my Z4M of 144.4 after an entire day on track with it, and having owned that car for like six years and autocrossed it and driven it on track before. So naturally, I'm very comfortable pushing that thing. I took the M4 out for one 20 minute session, having never driven it on track before and limited seat time on the street even, and I ran a 143.6. Bear in mind that this is neither a direct nor even fair comparison as the M4's brakes were just about toast by this point, and that's really not the objective of this video anyway. Uh, they were still effective enough to go out, but I was babying them because the car still had to make a three hour drive home. Also, you gotta factor in that for most of the session, I was driving like this. Not exactly conducive to a fast time. Then there's the fact that I just didn't trust the car yet. It's not mine, it's a new experience, and so I had a pretty healthy respect for it, meaning my commitment to high-speed cornering was definitely less than in my car. And yet, it was still a second faster. So what are the variables at play with those times? Well, it's power, brakes, and trust. So let's take a look at the laps and I'll explain. First and foremost, the M4 absolutely obliterates my Z4M in a straight line. No surprise there. DCT, huge amount of power. I can't believe how fast these things are stock. Down the back straight, I was doing 121 in the M4 versus 112 in the Z. But that gets thrown away right at turn one, as again, I babied the M4's brakes. I was really trying not to cook them completely, and I really didn't have much faith in them. And you can actually see that in the data. I'm going to that threshold braking point much, much quicker in the Z versus the M4. You can actually see how gradual my decel is in the M4. And that's not the car's fault, so I'm not going to harp on that anymore. But needless to say, there's a ton of time left on the table in those braking zones. So And even though I'm not pushing it as hard as I can, through most of the track, the cornering speeds aren't even very different, with about five miles per hour or less separating the cars through most of the corners. Half of that is probably the weight of the M4, and half of that is just me not being super confident in it yet. Really the most telling area where you can see the difference in trust that I have with these cars is going up the hill. So right at the crest, you can see I'm actually lifting 
in advance in the M4, kind of almost coasting over the hill and then going back to the power. Whereas in the Z, I'm just about flat out, only letting off a hair right on the crest so it doesn't spin up the rear tires and then jumping right to the gas. And the speed differential through there is huge because of that. I'm sure that the M4 could go significantly faster. I would just need to build my kind of comfort level up to that point. Uh, it responds quickly to inputs. The front end dives into corners really nicely. It's actually quite sharp, even without a track alignment. And if you're careful with your throttle inputs, it can exit a corner very quickly, riding that crazy surge of torque from the S55 uh, with just a touch of oversteer. It really likes to exit with just kind of a whiff of oversteer or with too much input, quite a lot of oversteer. I find that the rear diff actually does an amazing job of sorting out the rear on corner exit, whether you're trying to go for a kind of a big opposite lock moment or just put the power down smoothly. It does a nice job. And actually in a couple of the high speed sections, you can see that the power and grip of the M4 actually let it carry more speed than the Z, nearly 10 miles per hour here in fact. Being larger, heavier, and softer sprung than the Z, the added weight transfer took some getting used to. The grip is there, it just moves around and feels a bit floaty at speed. If it was mine and I planned on tracking it more than just like once a year, I'd want more body control and a bit lower ride height. That alone would give me more confidence because in stock form, it feels like you're riding up on top of the car, kind of riding this wave of body movement versus hunkered down to the track like in the Z. One of the few sections of the track that the Z4M actually has a really distinct advantage though is that super tight stuff. With 800 pounds less weight and the ability to put all of its power down, the Z4M is awesome through there. It, like you can't really beat the physics of being nearly a thousand pounds lighter. Whereas in those sections, the M4 actually starts to feel its weight a little bit. And once the front is loaded, it actually takes a lot of self-control to keep the rear end in check. Once that front is loaded up, if you go to the gas early at all, or just a hair too much, the thing just wants to turn into a drift car, which, I mean, it's exciting. It's fun to dance at the limit like that. It's not the fastest thing in the world, obviously, um, but it's definitely a good time if you know what you're doing. I'd say that with fresh brakes, cleaner driving from me, and most importantly, more seat time to build kind of faith in the car, I think I could pretty easily shave two to four seconds from that 143, which for a stock, heavy, hardtop convertible street car is pretty damn impressive, I would say. Uh, I probably enjoyed my Z4M more on track just because it feels a bit more at home out there. And driving stick on track is just way more fun to me. I enjoy that added kind of complication, like the extra variable. Uh, but the additional power of the M4 is super addictive, and it gives it gives it an on-power adjustability that my car doesn't really have. It just doesn't have the torque to really be that adjustable on, on power. Overall, though, I am shocked that it's as capable and as fun as it is out there. This is technically the slowest of the F80s, and yet it's still a total rocket ship. It's admittedly a bit of a handful at the limit, but that kind of makes me love it. <laughs> Sometimes you feel the weight, but that doesn't stop it from being an effective, if somewhat blunt, track instrument. I'll put it this way, an F80 M3 six speed is looking awfully enticing to me these days. Well, hey, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I really like putting together these little track impression type videos. Um, so if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more. I'm going to be posting a lot more frequently these days. So stick around and uh, let's go. <laughs>